Hello everybody and welcome back to another Nervous Reviews video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the second book in the Sandman sequence. Uh, this is the second book which is called The, the Dollhouse. Uh, it's a fantastic book. It's a great book. Fantastic. It's way better than the first book. But I do want to mention before I go on, get onto the review, some reviewers don't like to go through with every single book in the series and I totally understand that because it, get, it does get less views. You know, people are not going to watch this as much, but that's totally cool. Uh, I've accepted that and I'm still going to be reviewing every single book in this series until its completion. Although the first book was really, really good, uh, I think I might downgrade it to a two star at this point because it is like a fantastic book, but the story is so unstreamlined that it does pose a little bit of a problem. Uh, at the same time, it's a fantastic book just because of the art and the narrative choices. It's a fun, great little adventure. When we get onto this book, however, it's like a very big step into the big leagues. We finally have joined this big narrative that, uh, like it's not a massive narrative, but it is a narrative that spans the entire scope of this entire book. This entire book is just one story and it's a fantastic story. It really does feel very relevant to all the stuff going around it. And it's so interesting how Neil Gaiman sets up the story to be so epic, although so small. Like this, the story is not that big. It's just about this girl and like this, he, she goes to a convention and also like her grandma was one of the people from the old book that was like sleeping her entire life. And then she becomes a vortex. What? What does that mean? We don't know. So it's very weird, right? It's not a very big giant plot, but the way it's told, the people who are, you know, even related to this, it's so, so interesting. I just want to walk you through this because it's unbelievably fascinating how, how this book is made. I wish like I could make something like this. This is so fantastic. The first chapter of this book, basically, these people, you know, in the in uh, in the desert, like these, or I, I believe this is African people, and they're kind of talking about the story that they, that have gone through their uh, that has gone through like passed down through generations, and we do kind of have this relevant story. It's so interesting, right? You you forget about it because it has no relevance to the rest of the story until you finish it and you think about it, and it's like wow. So that was that was this basically. That's so interesting, and it's so so marvelous in that way because. To, to relate something like that so big, to relate like this ancient legend, this mythical hero, to the small little journey that's going on is so fascinating. It's unbelievably interesting, especially to kind of show us the change in time, how the story has evolved and changed throughout the entire history. It's so interesting. It's so interesting. We kind of see this Im immeasurable time frame that just adds so much epicness to the story. Immediately after, we kind of jump into another thing, which is, uh, this is the doll's house. So it's the actual doll's house. This is, who do we call it? Desire. This is Desire. Desire. So we do again go into Desire, even though Desire, I don't actually know exactly what Desire had to do with this. Uh, it was very vague in the book. I, I think maybe if I had read a little bit closer, I would have understood. But clearly, Desire played a part in this story somehow. And because of that, we also, we don't just have this giant scope of time. We also have another of the endless that is being related into this story. And we just have like this talk between Titans and it's so interesting. It's so interesting that this is, that the talk between Titans is not the main focus of the story but merely like a side quest or like an afterthought. And it's so interesting because when you put those things together, you have created this really epic story that just cannot be looked at in any other way than epic. It's so fascinating. As usual, the art is fascinating. They do take some very interesting choices here where they make the entire, make you rotate the entire thing because stuff is upside down for some reason. I don't know. Um, it's very weird in that way, but I think that, you know, in the times that they used it, they used it sparingly and it was used reasonably well in all those times, especially the first time. That was a very smart way of using it the first time. Second time, I'm not sure about, but it was very interesting because the way that Neil Gaiman really pushes the story in very weird uh, novel directions, it's so marvelous to look at because it's so, original it's so i've never seen something like this before and it really just gives you a, just a whole new experience just reading one of these sandman comics it's so fascinating in that way and i really do enjoy the art direction in this because it's, it's very very smart uh to do something like that it's also very interesting the way that the characters kind of are unfolded because in this story in particular we have a lot of characters that are named and we are expected to remember I, I didn't very in much enjoy all of that because the way that these characters were introduced it was very confusing, especially in the comic format. If it was a visual format or a like you know a novel format, it would have been very easy to understand. Just in the in this format, I was like, okay, wait, is she her? It's like, no, wait, they're not. They're different people. In one panel, we have this guy and this girl who are just kind of like talking. And then in the next panel, we have a guy and a girl that are, you know, that are kind of drawn from a little bit of a far off distance. And so their details were not exactly clear to us. And although I'm looking between the two, I'm like, are they the same people or are they different people? Because they immediately change the tone, but their hair colors are the same. So I'm, I don't know, like I, I, it's very difficult to understand in that specific thing. I, I think I spent a lot of time there. Uh, at the same time, I'm not a very big comic fan. So the way that this comic was written in some ways where like sometimes, you know, you have to read from left to right uh, and then you go down to the, other, to the other page you read left to right, you go down. Sometimes it's written so you have to read across all the way. 
And it's like, to me, it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing to figure out which way I'm supposed to read. Because the way you're supposed to find out, apparently, after like, I've, I've looked through this a little bit, is that the panel is kind of extending into the next page. Although it's not all the way extending, it's just kind of like if you spread apart the margins, just you spread apart the book a little bit, you'll see that there, it extends a little bit. It's like, it's kind of confusing. And uh, I didn't really appreciate that because it confused me so bad. Um, I'm not a comic reader, I've read a little bit of manga, but that's, that's pretty much it. And so the art direction in that regard was a little bit confusing, but I think for normal comic readers it would have been easier to understand. We do have an interesting direction that we've taken Sandman here, the actual, the Endless himself, uh, what's his name, Morpheus. We have taken him in a very interesting direction and I really, really love the direction that his character was taking. He was not a main character, not even a little bit. The main character was someone else entirely, but he does show up and he is a main character and uh, he's one of the important characters anyway. And the way that kind of we've pushed his character in the story is so interesting because we have not seen this before in a different story. It's a very brutal part of him that's kind of revealed. It's kind of, uh, you know, he's sorry for what he's done, but he has to do it. And it's, that's just an interesting way of uh, twisting up a god of a character. It's so marvelous. I really enjoy that the way that the uh, that his character is particularly done. I'm very, very looking forward to the next parts of the series. I do have the third book already, uh, but currently I'm reading a different book. If you have not noticed if by that, it's slightly lower. You can see, so I have taken this book out and uh, I love this book. So I'm gonna keep reading it and then I'll probably read Sandman uh, eventually. But I will be going on with the series. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this review or if you did enjoy this book, please leave a comment down below telling me what you liked about it and please do leave a like. That really helps out the channel and I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you like any of Neil Gaiman stuff, if you like Sandman, if you wanna see the future Sandman comics that I will review uh, or any other you know fantasy books or anything uh, you can go ahead check out my channel and see what you like go ahead and look at my goodreads down below you can uh, follow me there if you want to see what books i'm reading currently it's a much easier way to get in contact with me and stuff so you can go ahead and do that if you like uh, thank you guys so much for watching i really really appreciate it uh, and i will see you in the next video goodbye